Let's take a look at our contact module and explore some of the features here. You can see that I'm in the contact module for Premier Aerospace. Right below their name, I can see a list of all the links uh, to various records related to this customer. So I can see all of their parts, their active or all work orders, estimates, quotes, and so on and so forth, including delivery performance and profitability for all their jobs. Right below this, I can see the different shipping addresses that we might choose uh, for purchase orders and, wor and work orders. On the left-hand side here, I see their unique client ID, as well as the contact information for our main contact at the company. Down below here, I see shipping requirements and settings for this customer. So I can see that they require uh, us to use their UPS account, only shipped exact quantity of parts, and uh, their on-time delivery window is seven days early, zero days late, a few other details related to packaging and shipping, and they have a lead time of one day to arrive at their dock once we ship from our dock. All of these settings will actually drive behavior down into the work orders for this customer. So it will uh, automatically calculate when things are available to ship and when work orders need to ship to stay on time based on the on-time delivery window. So it'll feed things like their UPS account number down into the jobs where employees that are doing that work can see the information and act on it accordingly. Just below the shipping addresses, we can see a personnel table where we can keep track of all the employees at our customer. Down below the employees, we see a notes table, which is kind of a secret notes table. Not most employees can see this, only for certain users. And we can put things like their portal passwords and things like that. Down below that, we see the client satisfaction survey results, any, any surveys we've sent, and I can link in the actual surveys. And then down below that, I can see our any corrective actions that this customer has sent to us. Down below the shipping information, I see where we uh, can document all the billing requirements for this customer, including signed credit apps, uh, their payment terms, things of that nature. And down below that, I see the quality and paperwork requirements for this customer. So we can see that this customer requires us to deliver certs. They do require a CFC. Uh, they want first articles only when there's a new revision, and they would like it in the AS9102 format. We have a few other settings related to AS9102. And then below that, we have a field for putting other quality requirements, just as text-based notes, which will feed onto jobs. And then below that, we can also link in any quality or paperwork requirements that this company has as a global standard, not related to specific jobs. I can see they're ITAR controlled as well. Uh, and that will feed behavior onto vendor purchase orders, uh, to employees that aren't uh, US persons, they wouldn't be able to see these jobs, for instance. Down below that, I can see settings related to uh, sales and uh, estimating, customer service, that type of thing. I can see who the account manager is for the company, uh, what kind of estimating requirements they have, any specific notes uh, that are not related to quality per se, uh, industry, and general files down at the bottom, as well as a link to the folders that ProShop will automatically manage and create subfolders for each project that we need to work on as we create parts in ProShop. So that gives you a little bit of an overview about the customer page. Uh, keep in mind here up at the top, all these links we see at the top are always live and ProShop generates them constantly. So there is no need to run reports, and you can just click on anything you need, and it'll always be up-to-date and current as of that moment.